Hey, how are we doing? We are live. It's been a, a really, really, really busy week. Before I go any farther with anything, last week I had a super chat that was missed. Totally my fault. I'm going to switch things up just so it doesn't happen. Mr. Buys a Lot uh, gave a $5 super chat from last week. Again, it wasn't called out. I, I totally missed it. I didn't see it till after the show. I sincerely apologize. Something I always hate to have missed. Um, so again, I just wanted to set that straight on that one just so I don't miss it. So that one is off the bat there, off my, my plate, so to speak. Again, I really feel bad about that. It's not something I would like to do. Uh, let's see. I know I already saw some folks. Carl, of course. How are you doing, Carl? Um, I hit you back up too on that message. I did see that, just FYI. Hey, Penny, how are you doing? I'm going to go out on a limb about this subject matter here, but my two cents is honest expectations and reselling you get what you put into it learn and list learn and list yep that's pretty much it carl a little more more aspect or nuance i guess i could say to it than that um there there's a little more things we'll be bringing up too i've got some new video things i've got some new things for patreon which obviously carl you'd be interested in knowing um, another video there. You all know I'm going to be tomorrow on, and I thought I saw Dom in here. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Hey, there's Dom. There's Dom. I'm going to be with Primetime Treasure Hunter tomorrow on his channel. Again, Primetime Treasure Hunter. So if you haven't subscribed, I would recommend just going over there now and subscribe. It's already up right now. I just saw some messages from him, so I think he actually even sent me the link for tomorrow. But it's 8 o'clock, Primetime Treasure Hunters channel, right here on YouTube. You guys know I, I love Dom. Dom's a great guy. Um, he's the same type of person in the same kind of things I am. So anybody who's seen the shows you knows we really get into it, um, and we pretty much feed off each other. I always get a lot of good feedback from those shows. So again, if you're not on his channel, subscribe to his channel and vice versa. If you're over here, please subscribe to my channel as well. If you didn't hit the like button, pop that like button also if you could for us. It does help out with, I guess, the feed, um, the, the broadening of the videos. Hustle and Grind Calgary, how are you doing from Canada? Get out of what you put into it. Yeah, um, for me, I get a lot of... Now, let me put this out there, too. I can no way answer all of my emails, my messages, my comments, all that stuff. It's just, there's just no way. I get hundreds of them now a week. Um, I get a lot of stuff about questions on prices and this and that. Now, there's just no way on earth. I would just, just be doing that all day long um, because the ones I got to do, spend I spend a lot of time on. And then, you know, I've got other stuff in videos and then I do work and I do picks and pricing and everything else. So... No offense to anybody if you don't get an answer on something or I don't have time to respond to, to feedbacks and things like that. You know, there'll be a couple days. I haven't put up anything on Instagram. And I do have an Instagram page, um, The Auction Professor, as well. There's a Facebook page, The Auction Professor. I don't get on them as much as I should. I do apologize for that. My my number one thing I do and make all my money at is is selling and doing and flipping and stuff. And I love that aspect of it immensely and it, it pays all of our bills i mean way over all of our bills you know i do love this because i love talking about what i do so you know it all kind of works together but all of my time mostly is tied up with my full-fledged business i do have employees so i've got to keep them running so i can't just stop on a drop of a dime and do stuff unfortunately or fortunately i don't know where you'd want to fall that into your philosophy I've taken nine years to get to this spot, full-time, nine years. So expectations. Um, I, I get a lot of people messaging me and, and stuff like that. And again, there's some that I answer all the time with Patreon, and I don't get to those even as quickly as I, I hope, but that's going to change because seasons change and our whole workload and everything changes starting in winter. So everything will be different here. It won't affect anything going out there. I'll just have more time, less picking less shows to go to and things like that. So anyway, expectations from so many people, from all these questions and comments and, and remarks that I get are, are that it's just should be so easy and they're distraught when they find out it's not. Um, true story, somebody quit their job. They were doing okay and they thought, oh, we're just going to make it, we're going to make it, we're going to make it. And they already quit their job. And they just were in over their heads to a point that, I don't know what you could do. I mean, they just, it was all over the place. Risk of being shut down in the whole works. 
there's nothing I can do in, in that aspect to help anybody, you know, even if you're trying to get a response and stuff like that. No offense. I feel for you. We've been there, you know, eating off. And I've said this many times. This is true. Eating off ramen noodles while the kids ate the good food, you know, because you do what you got to do. You pay your bills and you take care of the wife and the kids. And, you know, you got to do what you got to do. That's that's just the way I grew up. So, you know, you, you, you live at your means. If you don't have anything, you you don't have anything, you know, so expectations are are so unrealistic with what i hear from a lot of people on here and then you know people say you know you shouldn't be talking about this or that and sharing all the knowledge and stuff like that not just me but everybody the majority of the people who watch this and again no insult or, or crack on anybody but the majority of people just won't do it or will give up after a year or so you know they just won't see it through to the end i'm not saying that's wrong there's nothing wrong with it you, you get in as Carl and several other ones say, you get in what you, you know, you get back what you put into it. So I do a lot of hours. I do a lot of stuff that most people would think I'm insane, but it's not work to me. I'm, it's on my brain. That's, that's, that's what I do. I, I get up, I do the same things. I get packages ready. I, I sort my stuff. I know my days. And if I need to change something, I got to do is make a phone call at the worst case scenario, or, you know, I can do something ahead of time and be ready for, you know, a change of schedule. You know, I can pretty much leave anytime I want, you know, Honest expectations, though, are, are just so far from what, you know, is actually the reality of what people talk about reselling. And I know there's going to be some people who are going to be haters on that and say, you know, it's just so easy. It's just so easy. It is for some people. I'm not saying it's not for everybody, but the majority of people, 95 percent are going to have, you know, similar experiences where it's going to take you a while to get to any point. There's just no other way around it. I don't know what else you could do. You know, there is no secret shortcut that I could say. Now, don't get me wrong. There's people that can show you how to do it and cut you out, you know, get you out of the trenches right off the bat and get you going straight off the bat. And, and it's not just me. There's other people who have some good content out there. Whether you pay for it or not, the content, it's all up to you. It's just like if I pay for an accountant. Um, I do pay for an accountant. Is it worth my time? to figure all that stuff out and then still have to do it and then hope that everything's correct and I don't get any calls or, you know, got to mess with something later on down the road. It's just worth paying for. And for some people, it might just be worth paying for, you know, uh, certain things, a course or whatever you want to do. That's 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 somebody else's game. That's not where, where my business is going. But again, everybody has their own way. Anybody can do it any way you want. There's no technical right or wrong way. But the bottom line is, no matter how you're doing it, it's not just going to be tomorrow you're making a lot of money. Don't quit your job, you know, ahead of time thinking it's just going to be a piece of cake and you're just going to roll into the money because everybody's doing it. I've got a ton of, of effort into this, as I said, and not just effort. you got to look at, at other aspects of it, like the time and in, in, uh, uh, stuff that it's, it's taken to find people to, to pick for me, I guess. That's a, a big plus that most people don't have. Having all the systems in place, knowing how storage works properly, knowing how the paperwork and how payroll would work and, you know, all that kind of stuff plays into everything I do. You're If, if it's just like you, it's just one person out there you got to do everything. you got to be the, the gatekeeper of everything. You've got to take care of payroll. If you're employing somebody you got to take care of accounts receivable which is stuff coming in and you got to pay bills going out you got to do inventory you got to source it photograph it ship it you know worry about the taxes and everything else is all just one person you're going to come to a point where you know you can't do much more and that's why i say there there comes an honest realistic expectation that it's it's going to be so easy it gets to a wall for a lot of people there's a bottleneck for most people i talk to and i do occasionally look at stores for people and things like that you know there there's there's always something that that holds people back so don't always assume that it's going to be just some easy flow just because somebody else does it that way me or anybody else 9 years is not some simpleton over overnight success. I've never claimed to be anything like that. So, and I would never, you know, say it would be easy like that. And I think anybody who watches the shows knows that that's me. It's it's a lot of work for for somebody. If you're not into this and you don't like this, it's not going to be as enjoyable to do. If you're only doing it for just the money aspect and only the money aspect, you know, fine and dandy, but I don't think that's going to be a successful thing for doing this because 
to, to want to put all the work and the effort into it, you got to really be invested in it. You got to have something above and beyond just a job. And, you know, for me, it's family and, and the, the time I can have and do stuff and see things and go somewhere if we need to go see a sick relative or something like that. Or rush into a, an animal to the vet at, you know, one o'clock in the morning and spending the whole night at the vet. You know, I couldn't do that at a normal job. If I was a regional manager and I told my boss that my dog, you know, I, I'm at the hospital with my dog and I didn't show up for work, I'd probably be written up for it, dog or not, even if it's something I've owned since he was a puppy. That's just that's just what I would see in, in a corporate job. And I know many people who have corporate jobs or have had them will probably say the same thing. I would have had to have gone into work, even getting home at 7 in the morning, being up all night. Even if I had to be there at 8 to open the place, I would have drawn my dead body in there, you know, to, to that extent. I'd be so tired. But I would have had to have done that. And, and that's what you got to do in corporate jobs. So, I've got a major reason not to want to go do that again. I would hate to do that. I would feel so depressed to have to go back into a restaurant. And and again, I know there's people in restaurants. I did it for 20 years, so I'm not saying it's wrong to be working in a restaurant. For me personally, I did that for 20 years, and it's it, it's an awful job as a regional or as a general manager or assistant or whatever level you may be at. So. We'll float back and forth in between that topic here. Let me let me show you the neatest thing I've gotten in I don't know how long. And I I I, I left it out. And usually I put stuff away or, or stack it up for um, photographing or something, or I put it in a bin for a certain date to start looking at it again. Now this is early. I, I just simply loved this thing as an advertising piece. I have never in my life seen something like this and this is something I've been researching a little bit of time on this is probably from the 1920s it's indigo or indigo um, true denim it's actually a piece of denim um, really nice piece here I'm really kind of surprised but it's definitely pre 30 ish probably in the 1920s it could be from like a World's Fair or something like that or, or so these go way back so it's hard to say this could be as far back as like the teens now value wise i have a clue at this point i know i wouldn't sell it probably for less than 150 bucks but at least until i can figure out value wise but i've never seen i can't find anything on this yet i didn't really dig into it real deep but i know ebay and terapeak and all that i haven't seen anything on it but i got a few more places to look still rather interesting nice promo piece never seen anything like it i had to look up the the uh cowboy pants logo uh material and there's not much of it around at all they did put stuff marked lee cowboy pants but it's very slim and far between even modern day lee like signs made out of denim and leather and stuff just go for a lot of money i'm just really surprised i mean this goes back to you know buddy allen stuff like that it's an interesting piece in my book uh really surprised i might hang on to it for a while just because i think it's really cool I've had um, a Levi jeans trade card that's in the shape of a pair of jeans before, and I sold it, and, and I wished I would have kept it because it was really neat, you know, and sometimes you you see something. I'm not really a pack rat, on, on, so to speak, but I'll hang on to it for a little while, and then I'll end up finding something cooler, and it'll be sold pretty quickly, I'm sure, but it's rather interesting, though. I showed somebody else, and they actually offered to buy it, but, you know, at this point, I wouldn't do that, but rather interesting. I just This is the kind of stuff that I just love. It's like a literally a treasure hunt when I'm out sourcing and stuff. Just really kind of surprised. And I only got a couple bucks into it, so I really can't complain no matter what. I know it's early from where it came from and the source, the material. I mean, you can just tell. That's a nice early piece. You know, you can see where the rivets should be and all that kind of stuff on there even. Really unique, but anyway. That's part of the reason I love what I do. And a lot of people... Just think again. It's it's a it's a job that you just pop into. And you're going to be so great at it because maybe even if you know business, you think you know how. Just pop in, I'll be great. But I love the stuff that I get, and I love seeing the stuff. I love sourcing it. It's like treasure hunt every single day when I'm out sourcing. I do miss some of that because I don't do as much as I used to. I don't have to, so to speak, as much. But you know, it's always fun to crawl up in an attic at a estate sale. Or in a garage at something, you know, in the upper loft or something. Or be out in a barn and digging through old boxes and that kind of places. I always get excited when there's been boxes sitting up there for, you know, decades. You know, I hate spiders, as many of you know. But 
that's an interesting, very enjoyable uh, uh, thing for me because it's it's literally what am I going to find? What am I going to find? It's just really cool. But let's hop over here and see who's here again. Well, thank you, Carl. All your orders packed up. Ready to ignore some emails. Yeah, I'm not big on off. The only one, I mean, I try and check all my eBay emails um, and all that kind of stuff and Amazon and Etsy and all that stuff. Off site there, I don't check my, and I'm, I know I'm bad on that, a lot of the emails that are tied to, to here and stuff, just because, again, this is like my second stuff. This isn't my main line of, of what I do. Um, you know, take it for what it is, unfortunately. I just don't have the time. I'm flooded with, with messages and, and comments and stuff like that. You know, certain means of, of, of uh, communication is fine. If, if, if I accept somebody, it's fine to do whatever. Just FYI, I don't want to, you know, have anybody wondering on that. But it, it's, I can't even accept all the messages. Sometimes I've got like eight or nine requests on, on one platform for accepting stuff. And it's, it's just, I, I can't, it's just not possible for me to do it. I can't spend hours a day, every day of the week, addressing stuff like that. And that's probably what it would take if I really dug into it. Unfortunately, I do have to apologize. There's just not much I can do. The content is what I think most people appreciate. So I'm trying to just get that content out there again. So, And again, I'll holler this out again since I'm now down to Dom's uh, channel here. Tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, EST. I'm going to be on Primetime Treasure Hunters channel. It's an all bolo um, <clears throat> video. So if you're into that kind of stuff or you've seen the other shows, you know we really go back and forth and we really shoot out a lot of of um, really insider um, stuff on that. Last show was, was there. We had and we talked about just sourcing. So it was a lot of places to source at. You know, you can go back and check it out too. Um, stuff that people just don't get heavy into. Like I know my auctions. I know how they work very, very well. I know estate sales. Dom, the same thing. Uh, you know, you know people in the industry, you know the setup, you, you know who to ask to know where something is at the estate sale. Sometimes you may be in an estate sale early and get some some privileged information ahead of time. So you got to do what you got to do these days. Everybody wants an edge. Being nice, courteous, and talking to people will give you the edge. Uh, back to realistic expectations. And I'm going to maybe throw this back in and out throughout this conversation. I'm not going to be real late today again because I, I've... Honest to God, been so swamped with stuff. I just had an employee leave like 15 minutes before the show started, and that just barely gave me enough time to lights and all that kind of stuff too. So, you know, I do rush around, and I I am busy. I got up this morning like at 5:45, I think, is when the alarm clock went off. You know, first taking the, the, my son to school, and then I set up and do stuff and wrap it and finish what I didn't finish last night. Answering emails from the time I went to bed till the time I got up. You know, things like that are a daily, you know, uh, job. You know, even on the weekends, I do that. I pack up on Saturdays, and it's picked up on Saturdays. On Sundays, I do more artwork than most other things on Sundays. Um, art professor video. Um, I have another one. I was going to go up the other day, but there was an issue with it not being able to go up, and I tried uploading several times and kept timing out and having issues with it. So um, that one's going to be delayed just because I, I scheduled time to put stuff in. So that means there'll be two art professor videos this week. One's the second half showing spun cotton, and then there'll be a special one to cover a more modern topic in Christmas as well, too. We're going to show you how to make some figures and many other things. I've got some new molding stuff that's coming in that's really going to blow your mind. It's something really unique, something we had to really dig into just to find. So we're going to show you something else. Um, drawer pulls, I'm going to show you the making stuff like that too on that. Still hanging on Ed because he has somebody um, out of work for an issue. So other than that, um, we got Ed still on the range and several other places just time-wise. Once I start to slow down with pickers and sourcing, um, I'll be able to spend some more time on video location shoots and things like that because I've had stuff lined up for months on a few things, but between my schedule, my employees coming in and going and things like that and kids' appointments and school, it's been kind of tough. So things will change. So anyway, just wanted to shoot some of that out there. Carolina Picks, well, thank you very kindly. I do appreciate the $5 super chat. 
I, I do honestly do. Uh, I've got a bunch of Patreons in here too. So the next Patreon video should be up tomorrow. It is all shot. I'm almost done editing. It's not done editing yet, but I'll probably do it a little bit later on this evening before I hit the bed. So I'm usually up to like 12, 30, 1 o'clock on any given day usually. So people who chat with me know that you can still get me sometimes um, that late. Um, but the video is going to cover for the Patreon. It's going to cover all kinds of different topics. There's going to be some bolos, some insider bolos. I'm going to show you some specific items. We're going to talk about sheet music just for a little segment. It's like three or four different segments. I don't know if it'll be a two-part or what, but it'll be at least a fairly long video either way we go. Um, it's going to be some interesting topics and a bunch of different things to look for. I got one we're putting together for YouTube as well. We're going to talk about fourth quarter because now's the time to be setting yourself up for next year, fourth quarter. This is when I'm already out talking to people. So, and I've said this before, we got the first year we got into fourth quarter, we thought we were going to be doing fine looking into it in January, February for that same year. And we were already, you know, um, People already snaked it out from, from below us, you know, basically, because we weren't on the ball early enough. People had it the year before. So we've upped our game, you know, substantially, and we do it much earlier than we have even before. And it's worked out fairly good for us. Now, there's a lot of risk into something like that, because if you bank it on something that's not going to be good a year in advance or something happens or something like that, you know, it, it could play and, and be a really bad situation for somebody. So it's a game that not everybody should play. Let's just put it that way. Um, buying wholesale or something along that line. Mass quantities. Buying like 1,500 units of, of one thing and 2,000 of something else and, you know, paying for part of it ahead of time and stuff like that. That's 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 something you got to work up to, I guess. Not saying nobody could do it or anything like that. I'm just saying I wouldn't jump into some. I didn't jump into it. I was I was nervous as can be to set up a big full fledged investment in the fourth quarter because it's a lot of money out the window if it doesn't go well and you don't have it quite grasped on on how to handle it. Again, you're it's all your game if you're a one person show, so you can't you know rely on anybody helping you. So anyway. Again, Carolina Picks, thanks a lot. I do honestly and sincerely appreciate that here. I think everybody knows how long it takes to put a video together. Um, I will probably, maybe just in Patreon or something, but just show you just how long it takes just to edit the title to, to a video. And I'm happy to do all kinds of stuff like that. If you join the Patreon group and you don't want your name used, just please just drop me an email. I'm going to have a new intro, as I said, which is almost done for Patreon. So anybody who's coming on, it's going to have all the do's, don'ts, and things to question. So, so to answer everybody's question in one spot... It's the only spot that I see that we can have that up there always at the top. I don't know how else to put something up at the top other than tag and stuff, and I'd rather just have it at the top. So the intro video is going to be changed for everybody. It's the first video you always see every time when you log on. That's going to tell you how to do everything on that page in Patreon and where everything's at. It's going to help direct you to things like that too. And also, if you watched that last video, you saw it was totally uploaded to a totally different means. No YouTuber, VMO, or any of that stuff was involved. And that worked wonders. So you're going to see some different content that um, I may not be able to put up here on YouTube. So there'll be some new interesting stuff coming out really quickly because I was really excited that that worked for everybody. I was worried that it worked great on my side with how I had stuff set up, but it wouldn't work on everybody else's side. But I'm, I was so happy that it was able to be played immediately, just like a normal video, as soon as you clicked onto that link. So again, I appreciate everybody on Patreon as well as here on YouTube too. So give me just a second here because it looks like my screen has frozen. I can't move my, my chat at all. So hang on just a second here while I refresh the page. Again, I got to shoot this out one more time, man. This was the neatest thing I had seen all week. And I got some really cool stuff, but even if this isn't worth a fortune, this was really cool, I have to say. Sorry to bring it up again, but you get something and it's just something unique that's old. It's just, you know, it's it's neat. I love jean stuff. I love old jean jackets and things like that. That was just really an awesome piece again. Um, it looks like I'm back now here, so hang on. Hopefully everything is going back in, because now it looks like I just lost it again. Hang on just a second here. Looks like it logged me out, so hang on. Why, I don't know. Always seems to happen on the live shows for some reason. I don't have these issues if I'm just recording or anything. Yeah, it's it's booted me to another screen. Hang on. There we are. Okay, I'm sorry. I got it back here now. 
Uh, let me get back to some intros and see who's here. Let's get to some questions. <clears throat> yeah, hang on just a second here. Josie, how are you doing? If I missed you, I'm sorry again. My feed froze and it only lets me go back so far to holler out. So if you got a question in there, um, I'm up to, I think, maybe the first Richard Johnson. If you're looking through the chat, prior to ACA, we covered the family at 350 a month. Current market, we now pay more than 1350 a month. It's one of the biggest in high defenses in our business finances. Must be talking about insurance, I would imagine. Hello, Saul, how are you doing? Yeah, I this provides for our bills. This pays for everything we do. That's how an unnamed group person runs theirs consistently. Yeah, self-employed insurance is crazy high. I will say that for sure. Carlene, how are you doing? The family flips. Welcome. Kent, how are you doing there today? Yeah, health is 100% important. As I've got a child now with a pre-existing condition, that's, you know, it's an expensive thing. So um, without insurance, we would be in some big trouble. Uh, let's see here. After medical school, I devoted my time to reselling because I'm in the process of curing my autistic son. Kids, kids are a big factor in it. I like the time that I can spend. We can, as again, I can do anything anytime I want. Time is a huge factor. Pollyanna Wilson, how are you doing? Well, thank you very kindly. Uh, I've been buying and reselling CDs, vinyls, and after two years, I'm finally starting to hit thousand a month consistently. Don't know how it works when you sell on eBay, but you just need to build up inventory. If you're selling. I've looked at a few stores this week. If you're selling flooded categories or cat, like a CD, I sell CDs. So there's nothing wrong with selling anything specifically. Obviously, certain CDs sell better than all the other ones. And if you center in on the higher dollar ones, you'll get a better return on your investment. And it works out better that way. But when you have items that are in these categories, that there's a lot of other uh, competition out there, you got to do something to set yourself aside. So if you can't distinguish yourself or can't get enough up, you're not going to get the sales in. You know, if you're selling, you know, $10 items, you know, and you're just not selling a ton of them at a time, you're going to need twice as many, maybe even three times as many to have enough money coming in. You just got to know your, your, your barrier from, or the difference between how much you're spending and how much you're making. And spending costs includes everything. What do you have into the item? What's your labor into it? If you're paying for labor, you know, what's it going to cost you for listing fees and final value fees? Are you including shipping? Is, is shipping paid for by the buyer? Are you shoving in insurance? Are there any extra costs that you have to associate? Everything goes into that fee structure there. The material to wrap it up, your box cost, all that stuff is figured into the fee. So at the end of the day, all of that is what you're basing your income on, your your sales. So you compare that to how much you took in and, and your difference is your profits. That's a, a really basic explanation, but that's the gist of it. You know, you got to pay attention to all that. Again, if you're doing this all by yourself, you're the only one who, who can figure that out. You know, so you've got to be your your accountant. You've got to be your your tax guy, your your business planner, everything. I, I again, I tell everybody, put up a plan, set up a plan on what you want to be in a year, and work towards that. I don't care if you have any skills or anything. Set up something that that you got to look forward to reaching a goal. A thousand a month, as somebody just talked about, consistently a thousand a month. Dom, primetime treasure. He had a goal that he wanted to reach every two months. Set up a goal. You hit that goal. You make another goal. Always have a goal in mind. Always have something to looking to, to be looking towards for. And I, that's a motivator as well because if you always got something to look forward to, it always it's a motivational push trying to reach that number, trying to reach uh, um, something like that. It, it's to me, it's a big plus. Like when we worked in the restaurants, 
I'd have like one store in a competition uh, against another store that were having issues and see who could bring their numbers up first. And the store that did, I'd come in and bring them lunch or something, like a nice lunch, something expensive or at least reasonably comparatively to what they could have eaten at the restaurant for free. And I'd, sometimes I'd even work in their restaurant so managers could go ahead and, and enjoy that. And I would cover their shift for that hour that they were at lunch or whatever. It was something you did to, for motivation. Again, as a as a general manager or even as a regional manager, every store I've done stuff with, I could run everything in the store because, again, I was a normal employee and then I worked myself up assistant and all that stuff. So you, you don't run a restaurant unless you can or anything unless you know how to do every stop in, or every spot. And that goes for eBay. you got to be able to run everything and do it all yourself before you can advance the business in my book. You know, <clears throat> make it through the first year and, and then you, you should be good to go, I would say, you know. There's some things that may take you almost a year to figure out because it's it's not explanatory. It only happens like twice a year, some issue. There's a ton of stuff like that that you won't know anything about an issue that could arise until it happens to you. Now, I'll give you an example. I have people that buy stuff. We'll go back to the chat in a minute. But I have people who buy stuff throughout the month and they don't pay. They pay at the end of the month. I send an invoice. And I've talked about this once or twice before. After 30 days, you cannot combine items. So if, let's say, over a 35-day time frame they bought stuff, the first five days of what they bought from, you know, 35 days ago cannot be combined into an invoice. So you got to kind of keep this in mind. And so the only way around that is to, you know, you could invoice them through PayPal. I just added into the shipping and literally put a typed statement as that is, you know, for the um, the instruction box that they have on there. I'll put an instruction saying, hey, this is for this card with, I put the number on there and this is for this card with the number on there. That way, if eBay comes back and tries to look at something, I've bona fide what's going on in that listing. I would always cover yourself, even if it's somebody you've dealt with for years. The people who I do this these kind of sales with have been buying from us for one of the ladies has been buying from us probably for close to five years, every single month for five years. So you get to know people. I know her by, you know, very well name. I know how many grandkids she has, for crying out loud. So, you know, you've talked to them over these years enough to, you know, she's even brought me business and referred to other people. Where'd you get such nice stuff or where'd you get this at? And, you know, they'll say, hey, I'm friends of such and such. And that happens even in the real world to an online purchase site. So, you know, you don't take anything for granted, you know. Don't take that you're going to be a success back to expectations just because this person was or I can show you that I can make some money on it. Again, it's taken me nine straight years full-time, 20-plus years of doing eBay part-time and on and off because of other work, you know, obligations, working full-time as a regional and things like that. Couldn't do eBay all the time, especially if you're traveling and we were in Boston two weeks and then I was in Denver for a week or two and then Whittier, California for a week or two, Orlando for a month. I mean, stuff like that is what you do as a regional many times and you don't have the abilities to do eBay for a while. So just FYI. Let's pop over here and see where we're at. Yeah, it's much better being your own boss, Kent. Kent, you are correct on that one. It's a lot of work. Let's hear what Carl's got. But worth it if you like it. Yes, great. Get the machine running. Perfect, perfect explanation there for, for getting it going. I have always been into eBay. I was into eBay, and I'm not trying to brag, and I get people commenting when I say this, but I was into eBay when eBay was a fad and everybody made fun of us. We were a laughing stock for being the, the nut job who was going to sell something on an online auction and mail it through the mail. Wait for a check and all this stuff because that's what you got. Sometimes you'd even get money, cash, in an envelope, even with coins taped onto a piece of paper. That was the old days back then. You know, back when you could bid on your own items and, and all kinds of screwy stuff you could do on eBay. You know, that's when we were. We were on when Yahoo Auctions was a thing. And that's a long time ago for for those. There's people who've never even heard of Yahoo Auctions who wouldn't even be born when Yahoo Auctions were on that are sellers now that do make some good money on eBay. So, you know, things change and you just got to keep up with it, too. I wouldn't be relevant with this if I didn't keep up with what was going on. Um, there's another issue here that somebody brought up, and I haven't had a chance to look into it. I will probably put it in a video this goes to multi-user accounts on eBay. So if you want to, you know, have employees and have them have their own sign-ins, you darn well better read the whole breakdown on how it works first because the, what is it, the delegators and delegatees, 
there's two terms used on that. And one would be like the, the, the person in charge of the account and then other ones. If you link an account that you already have to it thinking you're going to do what you could on Amazon, like have multiple things running in together and then printing off from one, you can't do it on eBay. And once you make a selection, you're stuck with it. You can't go back and you can never tie something else to it as a delegator from what it looks like. I didn't get a chance to read the whole thing as it went on for quite some time. And I wrote or, or, or uh, read the the description on the the employee setup that eBay has. It again, it's in a terrible place to find. I did see it, and I watched somebody else's video to see that, just because it was easier to watch a video than for me to hunt around and peck and try and find it. In all honesty, which is sad that I have to go to YouTube to somebody who doesn't work for eBay to figure out how to do something. But again, that's the same way for fixing cars or whatever you want to fix. It's all on YouTube. We all know that. So anyway. But some good points, Carl. Thrift to life. How are you doing? Reselling is brutally hard work, but it gives you freedom and a bit of dignity. I never want to go back to having a job. That is my honest-to-God personal opinion, why I would feel depressed as can be if I had to go take a job working for somebody else again. Uh, again, when I worked for somebody else, I was no way could I do work it on my own and make this work. I never thought in a million years you could make enough doing eBay as a full-time job and not have to worry and, and to be able to bank money and advance your business. It just never thought as a po you know, possibility way back when. And we had already done eBay. I just thought it was a part-time extra gig. you know. So y you never know. I would never go back. I am just wished I would have done this 20-plus years ago. God knows where we would be financially, at least stable-wise and, and stuff like that. I would have been so far ahead of where we're at now. You know, you live, you learn, you, you take your best chances, you roll your dice, and you do what you think's best for, for you at the time. So I've made my mistakes, and I'm sure everybody out here has had some terrible mistake that set you back at one point. We've blown money on stupid things that didn't return our investment back off and stuff like that, too. It's been a long time. We've learned from the mistakes. If you don't learn from them, then that's on you. You know, everybody's entitled to one mess up on the same issue, but if you do it two and three times... You're just not learning from your mistakes. A mistake's fine, and, and you should expect it. Just learn something from it. Don't do it again. Uh, that's all I can tell you. Like if I'm, if I, as a regional or as even as a, a GM, if an employee did something really stupid, they knew they shouldn't do it, and they came to me and were honest about it. My, fr I always usually gave them one at one one time if it was major, you know, unless it was something obviously like um, harassment or something. I'd term them on the spot, but. Something like they messed up or didn't count something and didn't go back and check it. One chance. You learn from the mistake, we'll move on, and, and I'll forgive you. But you, you don't, that's another story. Unless their story on what they were doing was totally screwing. They were obviously stealing or something. I don't. If somebody steals from me, they're gone right away. I don't care. I don't care who they are, what they were doing it for. You know, No, no theft around on, on us and... I don't care if it's a friend or what. We don't mess with that anymore. I'm done with those days. You know, we're fairly honest people. And I say fairly honest, I mean fairly honest. I can't think, I don't even speed more than, say, five miles an hour over the speed limit. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not a demon anywhere or anything. So, uh, thanks, Kent. Thank you, Thrift, a lot. Yeah, those little pants, I, I really like those. Those really made my day, I have to say. I literally, I'm not kidding, I have these things sitting on my desk still, and I never do that. Well, I don't say never. I've got a, I've got a cigar label that I had put up there, too. Yeah, I got some really nice cigar labels the other day, some really awesome ones. I haven't seen them before, either. Let's see here. Saul, I'm now on 400-plus items, and now the wheels are beginning to turn. It takes time to build up again to ex expectations to get the store I share with you I have like 27,000 items I think I don't know what it says for the total that that's counting some listings have like 10 15 100 uh, different items in some of the listings we have multiple quantities of stuff there's like 27,000 individual items on just the store we share with you it's, it takes a very long time to get that kind of inventory up, even with help, because you sell stuff on a daily basis. So if you miss a day, you're, you're going backwards a few steps, I should say. So two steps forward, one step back kind of thing is what it kind of feels like some days. I'm not saying it's, it's bad or a terrible thing to be selling a bunch of stuff, but 
you know, you got goals. Again, this is why goals matter and why you should always set goals. Set yourself a goal to get so many listings up by a certain time. You should be able to, anybody should be able to do 10 listings at the end of the day in about an hour and 15 minutes or so, somewhere in that range, depending on what you're selling. If it's postcards, I can list easily 20 postcards in an hour, probably more like 25 or 26 in an hour. Scanning is, is oh my God, it's so easy with this, those the Epson um, duplex scanners we have. We can just drop them in and it just it's instant. I mean, you can set your DPI and the card just flies through. So... You know, scanning is nothing. In paper now, we've got two of those scanners. So, you know, one by one unit for, for a couple of laptops and one by a tower, server, and laptop plugins, two in the same spot. So, you know, anybody can just drop a piece of paper into a scanner and list 20 items in, in an hour, hour, and 15 minutes. So if you do that as a goal every every day of the week, you know, even on Sundays, if you want to pay, take a day off, you get up an hour earlier and you list 20 items and you're done for the day. You know, answer your emails or whatever if you want. If not, take Sunday off and don't even answer emails. You got 48 hours would be a reasonable assumption based on the notices that eBay posts that says, please allow so many hours for the, the seller to contact you. So there's nothing wrong with taking a day off. You know, we do do that occasionally. I don't do it as much as I used to because I'm more into, I've got, I can see we're, we're climbing the ladder, so I can see that. So now I'm more into it. The, the, the better you do, the more you're going to be into this. I can, I can tell you, if, if you're like me, and you're, you're always striving to improve it, I'm not, not, not going to be number one at any of this stuff. I don't really care about that. I care about how my business is going for me. I don't compare myself to Joe Schmo or somebody who's got some kind of massive business. I don't care what somebody else is doing. I'm only worrying about my goal. My goal is what matters. It doesn't matter what somebody else is doing. It doesn't matter how many boxes they're showing you shipping out in the morning. I could sell one item and, and outsell everybody for a whole month from selling one item. It, box counts, sales totals on one account mean nothing. Again, a lot of people you see probably have multiple accounts. One account means nothing. I'm all across the place. And if you're in my Patreon, you've seen my, you've at least seen some of my inside Amazon pages. So you know I'm at Amazon and you know I'm going to hit postcards. I think I've showed my Etsy page here or there too. So we're on, we're on multiple sites. You know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That goes back to the whole thing. Don't, don't, your realistic expectation at the, the end of the day should be that you're going to be on more platforms than just one. That should be your honest expectation, not just on one site. You know, I do have some worries for eBay's, the way eBay's going these days. You know, it is possible that eBay gets bought out or something happens. Somebody owns 5%, one individual from what I understand, or one entity, so to speak, who's on the board from what I saw. So who knows what's going to happen? They still haven't announced any new leadership and things along that line, I know. So I think Nike's CEO, or CEO just stepped down and somebody else's CEO just stepped down too think just in the last day or two so there's a lot of stuff going on in, in corporate america and, and obviously fourth quarter and all this stuff going on so it's just a real weird time for all this stuff to be going on at the same time so again your expectations don't don't think things can't change on a drop of a dime don't put all your eggs in one basket don't expect everything to work out the way you hope it will always count that something's going to be in your way there's always going to be a roadblock there's always going to be something and, you know, at least you'll never be disappointed that when it happens, you always be like, how am I going to go over that and, and just plow through it? Like if something's in my way, I'm excited to figure out how to fix it and get past it. I'm not dwelling on anything I talked about last month that was an issue because it's it's already gone. It's done worth something that happened last year. Same thing. Who cares? We're We're moving forward. There's always a, a reason to at least vent out a little bit and then move forward. So I'm not saying you shouldn't be upset about things that happen, but don't expect it to be a smooth sailing down the road. Something's always going to happen. Even taxes. A lot of people don't save up through the year for taxes, and they spend the tax money. So come January when you got to file your taxes, you're going to have to pay a ton of money. Or if you're doing it quarterly and you're, you're not doing it like you should or you're not paying attention... That's that's usually when the new folks who just started have some issues. It's come tax time if they don't have their stuff set up. Um, one rule of thumb, and this is current. I've just seen it on the IRS's site. 
you can do your taxes and inventory or not inventory based on your own assessment of the business but you can only but you're you have to keep it the same way you can't change from year to year constantly if you're going to pick a way to do your inventory or not do an inventory or to do your taxes you do it the same way from that point on if you change it you better darn well have a reason why you are changing it again there's there's many different ways that you can do Inventory or not inventory. In many cases, you can not technically have to do inventory based on the amount of sales your company does. That's on the uh, IRS's business page site as well. Look it up yourself. It just depends on your specific business, what you do, whether manufacture something or any of these other aspects of it. I'm not recommending. I'm not a, a tax official, so don't go you know, following any lead or anything. I'm not going to recommend one way or the other. We've done taxes in many different ways throughout the 20 plus years. We've also done inventory in many different ways. We've accounted it differently. We've done it at cost. We've done it, you know, many different ways where you could accrue or not accrue and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I've worked for Corporate American and, and we had to touch on it that way. So I do understand how, you know, um, accounting periods work and fiscal years and all that kind of stuff. I don't have the I go fiscal year is the same year that the IRS reports for everybody else. It's just easier that way for me. You know, I know some companies fiscal year ends like in February or just throwing out an example. So, you know, it doesn't go with everybody else's, but I try to keep everything simple. Keep everything as much as you can simple so it'll be easier on your life in all honesty. Lee jeans I think have been around since like 1800s, if I'm not mistaken, like 1880s, 1890s. Levi's have been around since like 1856 or something. We were at the Smithsonian when we lived in, in Virginia, D.C. area near uh, Pentagon City. We were there for 9-11, and they had a pair of jeans in there. I want to say they were from like 1856 with the buckles, just what you would expect. It was, it was an... For someone like me, that was like an awe-inspiring thing to see a pair of jeans from 1850s in still okay condition for what they were and to see the buckles and stuff. I love and live for that kind of stuff. I love museums and, you know, there's a nice art museum here in Toledo area. It's probably one of the better ones. We used to go to Ringling Brothers in Sarasota, St. Pete area as well. And um, Peter Paul Rubens and, and some of the, the master painters they have there are just awesome. I love that kind of stuff. The Toledo Museum of Art has some really fabulous pieces. At one time, it used to be like in the top 10 museums in the country. I don't know where they stand now, but it used to be one of the really top ones. And it's still a awesome one. They're Egyptian exhibit for this style of city. It's really nice. I mean, and, you know, I think they want, I want to say maybe they had King Tut here, his touring, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it was here in Detroit. I know as a child, we, we went to it. And it was expensive just to get in for my parents. But anyway... Josie, haven't worked a job in over 10 years. I could never go back either way. You are working a job, though. You got that wrong. This is a job. I, um, and I do I do want to stress that because it is a job, and a job entails work. So it, it's your own job. You're your own boss. Um, you know, it's hard to explain sometimes to people that what you really do, and, and they, you know, like um, I was out at the Antique Mall the other day. Patreon, you got some of the footage um, that I couldn't show on YouTube. But... Um, it was, you know, astonishing, you know, that they were surprised that I could do online just like that and no overhead. Like, you know, this is from a mall who has overhead and stuff. So, um, you know, there's there's a whole business around all this as a brick and mortar that's different than it would be as us as a online seller. Here's somebody at Kent, 1889. I was guessing 1880s just because I've seen a trade card once or twice. A lot of the stuff I talk about, like uh, sheet music, Sheet music and records are tied together very, very specifically. And so are cylinder records because the same song could be on a cylinder record, a sheet music, a player piano roll, and a record all at the same time, just like modern days, but with, you know, different technology. And like if a record's worth some money, the sheet music's almost always worth money, as would be the player piano or the cylinder record. A hot ragtime on all four of those formats is going to be worth something. So if you can't find, uh, this is shouting out to somebody asked me a question on this um, off the page here. I just want to shout this out because I told him I'd let him know. So if you can't find a price in one one category, I can't find a price for a player piano roll. You can judge a record or a sheet music to some extent on what that 
piano roll or what that cylinder record would be worth. So just FYI, there are price guides and catalogs and collector societies for almost everything that we sell. There's people that, that are just in a huge big collector's group for sheet musics, for old 78s, for 7-inch 78s, for 45s, for soul records, for garage uh, LPs, for garage 45s. These are all separate groups that have their own pages. There's There's tons of them. If you don't know about Reddit and haven't been on Reddit, there's not some... Everything on Reddit's not great, but, you know, there's a lot of good stuff, and I do talk to people sometimes on Reddit, and I do find some really cool and interesting information. We're on subboards and other platforms, and, and, you know, we're involved in a lot of stuff. So, you know, that's just part of doing this. Uh, let's pop down here and see what we've seen. Dan, how are you doing? Welcome. Again, I'm going to try and catch up here, so I'm going to probably pop down and see if we can... Just in time's flipping. How are you doing? Welcome. Nobleness D, how are you doing? Three jealous people. Oh, you're talking about the thumbs down. You know, that's their prerogative. I don't, I if I don't like something, I just flip off the page. I'm not going to waste my time clicking a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If I don't like it, nothing. If I like it, I might hit the thumbs up, you know, but I don't, I don't, if that's what they want to do, I don't really care. Fortunately, I never found anything except for boxes and bubble wrap. I guess I missed part of that. Yeah, I've never tried. I've never dumpster dived, in my personal opinion. There's nothing wrong with it. No, you know, maybe I've gotten some boxes once or twice, but I mostly buy all of my boxes. I charge for shipping, so I can afford to do that. You know, I charge whatever the the full price is. I don't give out the discount that I get. That goes to cover my final value fees on shipping, and it goes to cover my my box price. And then we buy boxes in bulk from local um, uh, manufacturers. We deal with box companies. And then we get it cheaper, and then we can buy it in a big bulk, bulk like a skid or a pallet with a couple other people going in because the same sizes we all tend to use. 14-inch um, cubes are great, and 12-inch cubes are great boxes for paper. They're, they're the perfect ones for paper. Between those two, I can ship probably 90%, maybe even 95% of all paper items that I have. Let's see, where are we at now? I'm sorry, I don't want to lose anybody. Lee Hayes one, how are you doing? Yeah, there's more pickers everywhere, I I think. Um, pickers as in people like us, or pickers as in people who pick for me. There's a lot of people that do that now. You know, one of the things I do see too, sometimes you'll, you'll run into a picker because he messed up and was booted off eBay, and now his only choice is to sell it locally. They may be a good person, they just don't understand how the internet works, so to speak, or weren't shipping quick enough, or weren't describing it good enough. They're so used to somebody just being able to look at an item and say, hey, I want it or I don't want it, and then you can argue over the price. It's hard for some people to, to gather the concept of this, you know, straight off, never seeing it before, which I understand, you know, so I don't, not saying to criticize anybody else. Um, I know the last video I put up as a Hopefully a helpful hint on, you know, that you got to be able to get this. And if, if, if the biggest thing is research, and that was the last video that's up, um, got a lot of comments on it. I, got, I usually get more negatives on stuff like that, which, you know, I still put them out because the information helps more than just those who've been on for a long time. I try to help a broad range of people who watch the videos. The number one is research, and I don't care what you're researching, whether you're researching what store level to be or how to sell. you got to do some form of research to understand how the platform works or to understand what you should or shouldn't buy. So it all comes down to research. So research is your first step to understand how to do a basic and then a complicated comp search because there's more to comp searching than what I show in that video. If you've got some elaborate item that you have to center in on a specific niche just to get all the clutter out, there's there's things you got to do. And sometimes you got to have two or three screens open at the same time to, you know, be able to compare and things like that too. You don't have a sales ranking on eBay, but I do come up with my own basic ranking on sales on certain items by having a few screens open on different settings. And and I've talked about it before. Maybe I'll do a video on that. Obviously, we know what a ranking is on Amazon, and you can get a good gist. There's enough pages out there and, and uh, other apps that you can get 
that'll tell you a good ranking number of where to buy stuff below. Like you don't want to go over, you know, hundred thousand in a certain category uh, rank wise and expect to get it to, as a quick sale. Ranks mean everything. And on eBay, we don't have technically a rank, but you can get some some play in things by you know comparing things like sell through rate overall. You got to understand though that they're ninety days, so you're dividing your total if you're doing by comp sales. It's a 90-day thing, so you got to divide by three to get your 30-day breakdown. You want to do it on a 30-day basis. It's like figuring out projections, so just FYI. Not trying to lose anybody there. Why watch if you don't like people be crazy? Yeah, whatever they want to do. I got you there, Carolina Picks. Really funny how people expect you to answer these questions in a hurry. I try to get to every question. I know I'm slow. I know... I get people aggravated, but I try to start to finish. This is the one time that I try to answer all the questions. I may skip over people's greetings occasionally, just again, because I want to give you as much information, and me just calling out someone's name, and I'm behind, or I don't have a ton of time, doesn't do anybody good justice in my book. Yeah, there's nothing wrong. Saul, let's let's call out this one. Saul's talking. He's been a picker nowadays. I pick for some people for clothing now, because I don't want to mess with selling it, so I can just buy it. I can double my money if I spend three bucks or five bucks. I might get another five, even ten bucks, depending on what I'm buying. Maybe even twenty or thirty if it's something really spectacular, and just get the money back out quick and let somebody else sell it. It's just it's nothing for me. They come pick it up, pick it up from here once a week or whatever when I got a big stack of clothing. So I never mess with it, but I can still make money on it, and I'm not doing anything. I pick it up when I'm picking up other stuff. Bring it home. Jacket wise, you guys know I still love leather jackets. Um, I may do a leather jacket video here too. We're going to try and do uh, the wife's uh, Weeble video this weekend, so it'll just be her in the video. Um, and I got, uh, hopefully this weekend while everybody's gone, um, kid-wise, I'll be doing a video with covering some bottle issues, because I've got a bottle collection of our own here. I love glass. So um, a few things that we do keep around are bottles, because me and the wife both both like them, so... Yeah, this, I think they think this is an overnight success thing. Not at all. There's, it's nowhere near an overnight uh, success. Yeah, talking about, I see them talking about seeing pickers. Uh, most people I see at a thrift store are pickers. Ninety percent these days, you know, prices have gone up, so you don't see as many people thrifting there for thrifting reasons. You know, I see a lot of them at garage sales, but not as many at the thrift stores. And I don't go to thrift stores too much anymore. They just they they're auctioning off stuff on, on their own too. Make content of you answering questions from viewers. Most of the videos and stuff that I do address are related to questions that I get. Um, I don't just do random ones because then it's only for uh, such a specific. This is the time um, on a video that I an try to answer questions specifically one at a time. That's why I say I try to answer as many as I can. So if those get whoever gets on first is going to get their question answered the earliest. And I'm not trying to snub anybody. First in, first out, FIFO. I, I just do that for everything. It's it's a business decision, I guess you could say. Um, I'm anal retentive about. You know, setting up things. I got ADD and OCD, so I'm not going to be able to bust that pattern on it. I do, though, in Nobleness D, I do in Patreon answer specific questions. So I'll take that back. I do do that in the Patreon videos. Um, like the last little, I had two videos up on people posted images, and I went over and literally showed on a screen how I researched and came up with the price and compared it. They were odd and rare and vintage items. Um, some really nice ones too. There was a real nice postcard worth, you know, well over a hundred, and somebody has an awesome photograph in there too. But it's always neat to see that kind of stuff. Lee Hayes, one. I see uh, several Amazon book scanners at the at all the thrift stores. I I used to scan books. It's just it's gotten to be a madhouse and a rat race. So I don't do it much uh, ever anymore. I've got the little scanner that clips on the bottom of your phone too, and I don't use it. I used to pay for the monthly service fee to have the the downloadable um inventory of books so if the, i can't get internet a lot of the stores around here i think they do it on purpose like the sabers around here you couldn't get internet you'd have to walk to the front of the store by the windows so with that on your phone you could just go in there and and scan books still and you could set some factors in there so it automatically tell you keep or not keep based on what you set it up to do and that's what i used back when we scanned books i was very methodical um, there was, there's actually a YouTuber that I used to watch six, seven years ago when he did that, that I learned all that stuff from, honestly. 
Hey, Charles, how are you doing? Charles Lowe, welcome, welcome tonight. Good to see you. Yeah, around here we've had the savers close and the thrift stores are having issues. Prices have gone up and stuff like that. Whether they, they would be from you know resellers or not, everything's going up. They were always going up. Even before reselling was a thing, they're going up. Just like at the grocery store. Like a bag of shrimp used to be a pound, 16 ounces. They're 12 ounces now, and they're the same price they were when they were 16 ounces. Box of cereal used to be so many ounces. Now they're two or four ounces less. Everything is being done that way, and it's it's sneaky, so to speak, because they're not announcing they're doing it, but you got to pay attention. We've been watching this for, for quite some time, for years now, so this is just the way the market goes on anything. Everything's going to be done this way, whether it's thrifting or not, whether we or you or I or anybody plays a game in this, it's still going to happen. Corporate America raises the price as much as they can, as often as they can. It's just the way it works. There's nothing you can do about that. That's capitalism, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your opinion. Who here stays? I'm on Amazon, I have to tell you. We do fairly well on Amazon. Charles, in all honesty, those are your best choices. Charles is asking, what's the best place to sell Christmas? eBay is probably the best if you're selling your made Christmas, and Etsy is right up there. In some cases, Etsy might be more, more important to it. Amazon is great for wholesale Christmas deals. So if you're out there shopping now for a wholesale deal for next year, or you did it last year for this year, chances are Amazon is your number one place. That's where I go for stuff like that. Amazon's the best for Christmas stuff like that. I'll give it out because lights are something you can always sell. You just got to be able to get them cheap and have them on in stock at the right time in the right lights. You know, that's that's one thing. I'm talking about string box lights. They sell all year round. People down south will put them on their decks. When we lived down there, we had some on our decks and stuff like that all year round. Just to hang out, you're barbecuing and stuff. So that's one thing I'll give you there. I've called that one out before. It's no secret. There's other people who talk about Christmas lights. I'm not going to tell you which ones. You'll have to figure that all on your own. But that's one of those things you would buy a year in advance. Or you'd buy them after the season when they're being dumped off by the big companies. And you'd buy out all their inventory in the back. You're going to have to have a place to store them. I'm telling you right now, that's how it works. We've played with all that stuff. So, you know, I've done all that with it. So I've learned which way and how to do it from doing it. Not from, you know, watching a video on that one. That one's something you're going to learn on your own, I guess I could tell you. Hopefully that answers that, Charles, because those are your three best choices right off the bat, I can tell you for sure. You can sell maybe on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace too. If it's like a replenishable that you can make over and over again, uh, well, I don't want to call out that because that's something I've talked about on Patreon, but um, there are things you can do over and over again that you can sell on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace that you can even advertise that you can make in your garage. Christmas oriented. There's many that do this on on um, on uh, eBay. A good good test on this is look up in your local area, Charles, a Christmas bazaar. Around here, there's geez a dozen of them. In fact, there's one at uh, Tam O'Shanter down here, um, and it's huge. And people will come out there with vendors for Christmas and everything else. And you can do better at one of those shows, paying for a setup fee depending on the show and stuff like that and what you're selling, then you could if you sold it online. And you're getting all that money from all of your items, in some cases, in a two-day time span, instead of putting it up on eBay and waiting. Because people are just going there. It's a window shopping event, basically. They're seeing what's for sale. Like on the Art Professor videos I got with showing those ornaments. That would be a perfect example of places to sell those at because they can see them in person. You can make fancy tags with those same stampers that I show in that video. You can get yourself a cutout stamp, you know, a, um, an ink pad stamper with your own logo on it or something. It, it doesn't cost much to have one of those cut. They'll give you a handle, they'll give you an ink pad, and then you can stamp them over and over and over and over again. It's, it's really simpleton stuff there, in all honesty. You can buy a, a uh, label sticker gun for like 20 bucks on eBay. And you can order the, the actual price gun labels just like you would get from a store if that's how you want to do it. Everything is accessible. I've set up at the little little mom pa, you know, downtown fairs and festivals and, and all kinds of stuff like that. You know, everything that I do has sold, otherwise I wouldn't have still be still wouldn't be messing with it too. So anyway. It is fourth quarter, yes it is. 
just in time flipping a bunch of machinist tools i do do tools but i around here it's a fight i do love machinist tools especially the old wooden machinist chests those always do very good for us whether i want to sell them locally or not i usually split the pieces up and i'll sell the the bits and pieces uh the 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 mechanical pieces themselves and then the box itself separately that's what i've done yeah he's saying they sell fast they always sell fast too you can split that stuff up don what are your thoughts about ebay's call yesterday i don't even i didn't even pay any attention yesterday i was so busy i have no idea what their call or anything was on ebay yesterday carl i work fast that's an, or i work constantly that's a good thing yeah the important thing is to give yourself some time. Me, I ship on Saturdays, but after I get the prepped and delivered, Saturdays are a day off. Yeah, you can do however you want. Just set up yourself. Don't don't just think you're going to work a few hours a day and be fine. It's it's just not going to work. Studio 1231. Hey, how are you doing tonight? Meredith Deals, how are you doing? Well, thank you very kindly. Yeah, I work all day Sunday, too. That's a good thing because I have no interruptions. So I don't have to go anywhere. I can get up early and just work and do whatever I want. Um, Sunday's a real good work day because there's a lot of hours in the day with nothing going on. Lisa Lida, how are you doing? Well, thank you, Studio 1231. If you haven't hit the thumbs up yet i've got like around 170 people on please hit that thumbs up here at least show some love for the channel i do try to do my best i'm going to be on for about 14 more minutes and i hate to cut it off at that point but we do have a schedule still with some things still going on tonight i'm going to try and edit the video uh, later on after i get some food in me after uh, the show again i literally finished working like well, literally the minute I turned on the, the video because employees left 15 minutes before the show started. It took that long to get everything set up and all that kind of stuff. Brahma, how are you doing as well? Yeah, another video will be up. Tomorrow it should definitely be up. I don't see any problems with that at this point. I got another video all ready to go for um, YouTube itself as well. And then I'm going to be on with uh, Dom again, Primetime Treasure Hunter, tomorrow at 8. We're going to be talking just about bolo items. Nothing but bolos. A lot of items that people will probably think is odd. I would imagine we're probably going to be showing them in person, I would imagine. So I will have some interesting items to show, I'm sure. Hang on a second. I don't want to miss anybody here. Frank Zaragoza, well, thank you very kindly for the $5 super chat. Do you have a spreadsheet with customer data that eBay does not provide, which helps you make more sales? Customer data. I'm not sure if you're talking about the people who buy from me. I don't keep anybody's information that buys from me, in all honesty. I know specifics on people that buy from me over and over again, but if you're talking about tracking someone's data, I would not use eBay as a source for tracking that data. It, it's safe to put a card or something with information that gives them a website to like your own personal store off of eBay through the package in the mail, but I would not use any data from eBay with any of the... Uh, customers you know if they've contacted you or sent you something in the mail or something a totally different story but I don't try and mix anything like that if that's what you're talking about I do have a video or two that have some spreadsheets and I have some in patreon and, and for those in patreon if they need something I can throw something together I have thrown together some Excel spreadsheets just for a few specific people in the group as well I know Excel like the back of my hand so it only takes a couple minutes to move or cut and paste and stuff around on Excel I have a ton of different forms already made up that I use, so anyway. Hopefully that gives you a little insight on that. And again, thank you very kindly for the super chat. What time do you go to bed? 12, 30, 1 o'clock every day. That's about average. On the weekends, it might be 2 or 3 in the morning. And I do get up usually on Sunday I sleep in. If I stay up till 3, I am i don't probably sleep in past 7, 7.30 any day of the week. I can't. I'm always up. Sometimes I get a bad headache if I lay in bed too long. Hang on, let's pop on down where we're at here. 
Hang on just a second here. My feed's terrible sometimes. Uh, eBay, I eBay to help fund my IRA. I work on eBay in some form every day, trying to retire in 10 years. Good. You got a plan. That's a goal. That's a specific goal. Very specific. I would always get a goal. Delilah's Vintage, how are you doing? Good evening. Hey there, Delilah. Yeah, that's a 90s song. There's also um, a Tom Jones song, too, if I'm not, not mistaken. I do listen to some Tom Jones songs. You you can't get past being a, a person who grew up in the 80s without seeing the Carlton and him doing a, It's Not Unusual, which is just awesome. I'm talking about Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, if those of you who don't know. I'm sure there's maybe even another Delilah song, now that I think about it, a country song. Hopefully sooner than 10 years. I'm not going to retire until I can't do this anymore, just personally. I'm going to just keep doing because I like doing it. I'm not looking to retire at all, if that's the case. I mean, I want to be active, you know, until the end, if that's the case. I want to be, you know, fighting it to the very end. You know, we all got to die somehow, and I don't mind doing what I do. I, I love looking at the antiques. We've done that before. We sold. We do it when we're not looking to source. You know, I love antiques. I love collectibles. I love the whole aspect of flipping something. It, it, I get a thrill out of it. it it's a, um, it's exciting. It's it's engrosses my, my, my thoughts sometimes, just the fact of being able to flip something cool. Like, I come back to these. Uh, this kind of stuff, I love this stuff. Just stuff like that. It's, it's cool. Or a, a, a cool... 50 sci-fi toy I'd never seen before that I just score on or something like that. That stuff, I, I get off on that. It's really unique to me. It's neat. It's enjoyable. Sometimes I'll get toys that I had as a kid. It brings back good memories. So Let me pop down if my feed is going to work. No, my feed is frozen again. Hang on. We're going to try and reload the feed one more time and see what happens. Hang on just a second here. My my screen's totally reloading. Uh, it happens around here way too often. I don't know what the deal is, but it does happen a lot on my side. And then I got to do this and reload and wait. Again, one more time, I will be Dom's channel, Primetime Treasure Hunter, 8 o'clock tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time. We're going to be talking about bolos. Hang on just a second here. I saw something about tomorrow's show. Carl's got a comment. During the Bolo show tomorrow, it would be cool if you guys had opinions on a couple hot toys this Christmas. The ones you can never find in November, December. That goes back to just like me saying we buy a year in advance. The major companies have these toys produced a year in advance because if they're coming from overseas, they're coming on a ship. You've got maybe three months on transportation alone from the time it's produced and sent to a factory. We order some electronics and some things that we do projects with and that we... Some of our side businesses that we don't talk about, we order things from Alibaba. And I know that's a hated word around some people, but there's only one source on the globe for some things that we get. The only source, and they go through Alibaba. So you got to use them for some cases. And if you've ever ordered from some of these, especially in quantity or a case or something, it, it'll sit up in China sometimes. It'll go to one location and sit there for a week. It might go to another one and sit there for two weeks. And, and it might get stuck in customs because of the location it's going or the items in the box. So this is just with our items. I'd hate to see what it's, what's being done when they're bringing shiploads of stuff and, you know, bill of ladings and all this stuff flying back and forth. So there's so much, so many reasons why stuff are out like that, Carl, that it, it comes down to they order a year and a half, year and a, uh, year and a half in advance, I would say, is probably a fair judgment on many items. If you go to a toy fair or a toy show, most of those are items that are going to be available in a year or two, and that's when they're ordering them at that point, like a home show or something, or a new invention show, or the cars of next year coming out. You can't get them right away, but they're they're advertising them. So that's that's the gist on any of that stuff, all the hot toys. That's why something's gone or Tickle Me Elmo sold out or all that stuff, because they're ordered in advance and they don't know if they're going to go or not. And once that's going, it's usually too late to decide and have a second run made that quickly. That's why it took longer to get the next run of, of Tickle Me Elmo's or whichever Elmo was hot that year out. It's just the way it works. I worked in 
in retail for a while too, including work at Disney. And we did do handle orders. And a lot of the stuff was ordered seasonally and in advance for so long. I mean, it's just the way it works for any retail establishment. So, John, well, thank you for the thumbs up there. What's the item in general? Did I'm I'm not sure if I missed something on that. Just in time flipping. Auction does not show up in bin searches unless someone was looking only on eBay itself. Item will not post through the ad network most likely. If you do a search on eBay, it shows up auctions, not auctions, everything all on the main screen. You have to filter out auctions and bins specifically. Otherwise, it shows everything. You know, that's just the way it does in any of the searches on eBay. It shows everything, auctions, bins, and everything all at the same time, unless you single it out by clicking the little radio buttons at the top, on top of the listings that are scrolling. Uh, let me pop down. A brass phone dialer. Not sure if that's a question to somebody else. Use mobile only. I'm not a mobile person. I wouldn't begin to tell you how to look up much on mobile other than stuff on eBay or Amazon for ranking. I use the Amazon app if I'm trying to find something on Amazon, or I use one of the other ones, Camel, 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 or Keeper or something. Whatever I have on the phone at that time. I don't use as many of those apps, or at least the paid versions anymore, because we've we found some niches that work. I'm, I still have the same three items on Amazon that we've been doing very well on for a very long time, and I don't. I have, I have no competition. That's what you want. Southern Note, yeah, I, I love Excel. My boss, Lou, and I've talked about Lou before, broke it down and showed me how to use the whole thing Twenty in 97 or something, a long time ago. And I, I've always known it from that guy. He's just a bomb. I hate mobile for anything other than pics or research on the go. Yep, that's same here. I'm PC laptop for everything, just like Carl. A 70s era brass phone. If it's a brass phone, it's a reproduction probably. I have a, a 70s brass phone reproduction. It's got the old style, like 20s it looks like. It's solid brass. It weighs a lot. And we also have an original brass phone. You gotta. It, it depends on what it looks like. If it just looks like a brass princess phone, chances are it's just a cover of brass over a normal phone. That's usually what I see on those. We're going to have to cut it off here in just a minute. Yeah, we'll have to cut it off in just a couple moments here. Yeah, I'm sorry. It looks like when the feed disappeared, I've lost a bunch of the middle feed. It's still there. I just can't go back up and read back over it. Well, thank you, Carl. Sandra Bentley, welcome. Again, if I missed anybody, Justice02 or anybody else, I'm sorry. Uh, again, I try to get it. I got one more. I see Brian Campbell. Let's pop down and get one more question in here. I got another one before that. Let's get two here. Have you ever used a sniping tool on eBay? Which ones are affordable that you would recommend? I don't use any sniping tool. I very rarely buy anything off eBay that I, you know, that's important. Um, most of my electronic stuff, I buy like like scanners. I bought some of the scanners off eBay. They used um, Epson uh, DS510 is what I use. It's a duplex scanner. That I bought off eBay. I bought one off of Amazon. I bought a Cords off Amazon. I use New Egg and stuff like that too. I don't swipe. I don't really need to swipe anything. I rarely buy anything off eBay. If you're talking about like trying to buy something to resell on eBay, I've only done it a few times just because I don't even need to worry about that. I, I like to see stuff in hand before I do anything. I don't. I have enough opportunities to buy stuff that I turn stuff down. If I can't see it in hand, I usually don't mess with it. I get people a lot of times that'll send me a message or say, "Hey, I saw this. Are you interested? I could buy it for you or something." I don't. I don't mess with anything like that. I like to see it in hand and in person. And with contacts that I have, I've got, I've got an insane amount of inventory. I don't know how else to say it. An insane, crazy uh, amount of inventory, to say the least. So, you know, I don't worry about a lot of stuff like like that. I I don't snipe anything. I, I don't really mess with that. You know, the wife collects weebles or something. I'll just put in a huge offer or a huge bid, and you know, let that speak for itself. If if I want something on eBay bad and it could be something pricey, I'm prepared to pay up for it. Yeah, that's just me. I don't I don't mess with it. Don, is there a good source to learn how to discriminate between the early pressings and later pressings of records? It depends. 
on the record, I should say. The labels are usually the biggest deciding factor on being able to tell. And, and if, it's, if the labels aren't good enough for you, usually the dead wax, the matrix numbers in the dead wax usually give away a disc as being remanufactured. Most things, if it says remastered on the, on the dead wax, it's, it's a second one. 45s may be a little different because sometimes you'll see a 45 that says remastered, and that's just the studio that, that remastered it that version of the 45. It doesn't mean it's a newbie or anything like that. Like the matrix numbers on a on a disc. Some discs should have those matrix numbers hand cut into the dead wax. You know, with a, it's a little tool. I, we have one here, honestly, believe it or not. Um, but there, it's a tool that can be used for many things. It's not just for dead wax. And some of them are hot pressed into the hot vinyl. And that's where the dead wax numbers come from. Like um, on some records, those numbers are, mean everything. And I don't want to give away too much information because it's a long, huge process to explain that. I do cover a little of that on some records in the Patreon a couple videos ago. But uh, labels are, are literally the first thing. I can almost always tell on a label. One other deciding factor is, and a lot of people don't know this, is some of the earlier soul and smaller record labels are on styrene, the original. So if you get a record from something that you think is high dollar and it's on vinyl, it's not the correct version. It's a re repress or a dupe or a modern day you know, repressing made to look like the original. A lot of the scarce records, 45s, mind you, that you will find if they're three, four thousand dollar, like the Arctics or something like that. If if they're three, four, five thousand dollars, Tommy the Derby, four thousand dollar record. I've had three of those, mind you. Something like that. People will buy a record, they'll spend the four grand, and then they'll make copies of it. They'll literally record a acetate and press records from it. A lot of folks from England now they'll press them on a, on a separate label usually, but there'll always be a few that try to do pull a fast one. I'm not saying it's English folks doing the fast one. Don't I'm not accusing anybody of doing it specifically, but there there's people out there, scrupulous dealers that do that. Um, pressing wise, literally the labels, the number on the disc, the the disc number is another deciding factor because the the disc number on any record is only used once. You know, it's the number in the catalog. And as the catalog goes, the numbers change throughout time. So if you get the right one, you're, you're all set. Um, uh, Os Osborne's got a decent book on records. It's Osborne's Price Guide to, I think, Records. I think it's got a... I don't have a copy of it laying around here. I don't use the record guides very much. Um, but Osborne's is, is good like for something like that, too. Using the sites like Pop Psych, researching um, you know the variations. Because literally, you're not going to find all that information on eBay. You're going to have to go either to like a worth point factor or like a pop psych. And I like pop psych because I'm into records and, you know, I research stuff even not just for value, but for my own personal uh, knowledge, like an artist that goes by a different name. I like to know that kind of stuff. It helps me out in the future, even if I'm not going to make money looking that up. Hopefully that gives you a little better idea on that. That's a whole big thing, depending on what kind of records you're talking about? Right, not right now. You've got Japanese pressings coming into the market, brand new virgin wet virgin vinyl that are coming in from Japan on the import market. Nothing wrong with those; they're excellent quality. I've had some. I've heard them. They sell almost as good, if not better, than some of the vintage pressings. In all honesty, it just depends. So don't always knock off later pressings either. I should say a lot of the imports, even new imports, can outsell an original of that same record in not so great condition. If you've got a NM minus um, uh, Reiner uh, import, like uh, on a uh, Deutsches Grammophone or something like that, if you got the import, it might be worth more than the original, even the tulip version of it, the the original red red uh, stereo labeled um, DGG or something like that. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about records. I Maybe I'm losing somebody here, but uh, Deutsches Grammophone is a record company in Germany. It's one of the best ones, most prestigious. They have an archive line, which some of those discs can sell for thousands of dollars. A tulip on there describes the label. I'm sorry, I do go off on that occasionally. So we're going to cut it off on that one there again. I do apologize if I haven't gotten to anybody. Again, videos coming out tomorrow. Patreon, you should see a video tomorrow. Maybe a two-parter as, as I do do. There still will be another Patreon video up this weekend, at least one more. So you will still get two more Patreon videos here. Um, at least a two-parter before the end of the weekend. Another video here tomorrow. You know I'm on with Dom at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Primetime Treasure Hunter. 
Uh, Art Professor, two videos up this week. One's done, um, and another one will be shot. Um, and we're going to go modern Christmas mix, something interesting, and give you a way outside the box look on something that I almost guarantee you that you should be able to find a, a, a buyer for, too. So anyway, we're going to let it go with that. Again, I appreciate, honestly, everybody coming on. If you thought the content was good, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up for me, and I hope you have a good evening.